Welcome to the TFO Sportscast. I'm the lyrical miracle, the sexual intellectual, and the quintessential stud muffin, the TFO commish, the Raj. Now let's kick it. Top five moments of week eight. Number five, Westeros Guardians versus the Rainbow Unicorns. With both quarterback Princess Bella and running back Snow White returning from injury this week, the Rainbow Unicorns look for their third straight victory. But then Westeros Guardians are challenging the New York Miami Wolverines for leadership in the Mad Crackle division, so they too desired victory. And it looked like a stalemate at halftime as both teams were tied 14 to 14. Guardians quarterback Tywin Lannister brought some separation with a 60 yard touchdown pass to the Red Viper, Oberon Martell. The Unicorns would stumble on their own as Princess Bella was sacked in her own end zone by Stannis Baratheon to give the Guardians an extra two point lead. And then Guardian running back Adard Stark ran another touchdown in to increase the Guardian lead by 16. And then John Connington with a field goal to take the lead to 19. The Unicorns were able to get some points back on the board as Fairy Fawn ran back a kickoff return, but it was too little too late as the Guardians just overpowered the Unicorns. Guardians with the victory over the Unicorns, 33-21. Number 4, Lamination vs. the Champs Chumps. The Lamination has been struggling since their superstar running back Belt Buckle Face has been out with injury, and the Champs look to take advantage. Nation hit the board first with a blinky Mullendorf field goal, which at halftime was the only score on the board. The Champs would come back in the second half as backup running back Comet fumbled in the Llama red zone to give the Champs Chumps perfect field goal position. But the Champs looked for more as their superstar running back Chester Drawers ran in an 80-yard touchdown of his own. But Llama backup Comet would fumble once again to the Champs, which once again gave Chester Drawers the opportunity to score another touchdown to put the game out of reach. Llama Nation needs to pray for the return of belt buckle face ASAP. Lamination loses to the champs, 3-17. to 17. Number 3, Atlanta Maulers versus the Hollywood Heroes. My pick for the do not miss game of week 8. The Heroes would score first with a 5-yard Douglas Quaid touchdown. The Maulers would respond with a 15-yard touchdown pass from Ric Flair to Steven Regal, and just like that were tied up 7-7 at the half. But costly mistakes would cost the Heroes as Donnie missed an easy 34-yard field goal. And on their next possession, Luke Devereaux would pitch the ball to a down John McClain, and the Maulers would come up with the fumble. And then Ric Flair to Dr. Death to give the Maulers the lead once again. McClain would engineer a 23-yard touchdown pass to Devereaux to tie the game back up with it four minutes remaining. The Heroes would get the ball back, but then, in very controversial fashion, went for it on 4th and 11 on their 20-yard line. Ron Simmons came up with the big sack, and in field goal range, the Maulers picked up the J.J. Dillon victory. The Maulers happy with a win over the Heroes, 14-17. to Number 2, Sith Warriors versus the Cleveland Steamers. Two teams with a lot to prove. Both teams would hit field goals early, but it was Sith Warriors' Darth Reven who would score the first touchdown after an 8-yard run. Not to be outdone, Steamers legend Bo Nair erected an 8-yard touchdown run of his own to tie the game 10-10 to going into the half. We wouldn't see another score till the fourth when Bonaire did it again after a 23-yard rushing touchdown. And on the verge of losing, Darth Vader finds a way to run in a 30-yard quarterback sneak to tie the game with just seconds remaining. And it's off to overtime. And just like regulation, overtime was a very defensive battle. But with just two minutes remaining, Steamers quarterback Jack Sloth connects with Wilma Dick Fit for the big overtime victory. Warriors lose a very close one to the Steamers, 17-23. Number one. Dutch Ovens versus the Axe Icons. Two of the best teams in their division. The 5 and 2 Ovens look to face off against the 4 and 3 Icons. The Ovens would see the end zone first with a 55 yard touchdown pass from Nips Ahoy to Donkey Punch. The Icons would retaliate but had to settle with a slash field goal to bring the game within 4 at the half. The Ovens would have no mercy on the Icons in the third quarter as fumbles and interceptions helped to propel the Ovens to an 18 point lead going into the fourth. The Axe Icons would score again with a field goal, and then followed up with a successful onside kick. Buddy Guy would connect with Jimi Hendrix, and the game was now within eight. The Icons needed a break, and they got one as backup running back Magic Carpet fumbled to the Swede Mousteed, who ran it back for a touchdown of his own, and the Icons were now down by one. They set up for the onside kick, and for the second time on the day, the Axe Icons recovered it with just one minute remaining in regulation. That was just enough time for a jumping 44-yard reception by Jimi Hendrix to seal a 25-point comeback. Ovens lose what looked like a surefire win against the Icons, 28-21. Do not miss game of Week 9, Greek Legends vs. the Westeros Guardians. 
The battle in the Mad Crackle division is intense, as the Westeros Guardians have finally taken a one-game lead. But the Greek legends, who at one point were 2-4, and four, have won their last two games and are looking for a playoff berth others said would never happen. The legends come in with the number 3 offense and the number 7 defense. Couple that with the number 1 kicker in TFO, Uranus, and you have a threat to the Westeros throne. The Guardians are only the 15th offense and 12th defense in the league, and that is why I gotta go with them Greek legends. I've been saying for weeks this team is the most underrated team in TFO. Sure, they have two less victories than Westeros, but everything on paper shows the legends are the superior team. And with a victory, that will pull them one win away from the mad crackle crown. It's going to be a slobber knocker, folks. All right, join us for week nine. And until next time, until next Tecmo.